hold up. So Mufasa dies, right? But what happens to his body? Hyenas don't usually eat lions. And there's no other animal that eats them, except other lions. So watch this scene one more time. Is that, you don't think, WTF, so that means what? TikTok did it. TikTok already did it. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that just can't wait for you to smash that subscribe button to help us get over the 10 million subscriber mark. You know, Disney's original Lion King is one of the greatest animated movies ever made. Heck, it is probably one of the greatest movies ever made, period, animated or otherwise. And one of the reasons it's so great is that the story it tells is extremely simple and straightforward. There's a kingdom, there's a good king, a son in line to succeed him, an uncle who'd like to succeed him, a murder plot, a lot of guilt, and a lot of growing up to restore balance. It's tragic, but triumphant, epic, but intimate, and there's not a whole lot else. No stupid B-plots, no extraneous characters, no awkwardly shoehorned in merchandising opportunities or universe-building cameos. There's just no fat on this one, which leaves pretty little room to theorize, since by the end, the bones are picked clean. But speaking of bones, recently a new theory has cropped up on the internet, TikTok specifically, suspecting that the Lion King might be holding a dark secret in plain sight. And no, it's not the the leaves in the wind spelling out some secret message. Wait, what do they say? Pause the video. M Matt Pat is king? Wow. Who knew that a 1994 Disney classic would have so much respect for me? No, friends. Today, online theorists are asking the question that no one ever thought they needed an answer for. What happened to Mufasa's body after he died? Namely, did Scar eat his dead brother? Ladies and gentlemen, bear those teeth and ambitions because it's Morty time. Leave your theories in the comments. Comments below. I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty. I am so glad that we're trying to make this a thing now. Okay, so here's the breakdown. In January of this year, the TikTokers Classy King Zero and not Alexis LOL presented an incredibly compelling theory that really got the internet's brains a-working. Here's what they noticed. In the movie, Mufasa dies by falling from a cliff during a wildebeest stampede. Simba discovers his father's dead body, not realizing that evil Uncle Scar was the one that caused the entire situation. Scar convinces him that he'll be blamed for the quote-unquote accident and that he should flee, then sends his three main hyena henchmen to chase him down, which they fail to do because no one is good at their freaking jobs, not even in the animal kingdom. Come back, editors. Come back. I, I didn't mean you. You guys are great. You, you guys are great. The last time we see Mufasa's physical body, Scar is standing next to it while Simba and the hyenas run away. Scar returns to tell the rest of Pride Rock that Mufasa and Simba are both dead, which apparently they accept without question, despite the fact that Scar sounds like the most obviously evil guy of all time. Ooh, I quiver with fear. Now, Scar, don't look at me that way. Anyway, fast forward through some coming of age business, eating bugs, blah, blah, blah. Never really liked the Timon and Pumbaa section, to be honest. Forget Akuna Matata, nine-year-old MatPat was all about the political intrigue. Anyway, about 48 minutes into the movie, we get our first cut back to the Pride Land so we can see how poorly things are going under Scar's rule. I feel like most people probably remember this scene for this bit. Sing something with a little bounce in it. It's a small world after all. No! No! Anything but that. Because Disney doing self-parody at the time was new, as opposed to something they do literally every movie now. But what these TikTokers call out in their short little mini-theory is Scar picking his teeth with some bones and playing around with a large skull that, as they imply via a Google image search, looks very much like a lion skull. Add to that the fact that hyenas apparently don't tend to eat lions, but other lions do, and you've suddenly got yourself the connection that suggests something much more sinister. They think that the skull is actually that that of Mufasa himself, and that it's evidence that Scar not only killed his brother, but cannibalized the evidence and kept his bones as a trophy. Now that's nasty, but is it true? Well, we asked the world's top experts on lion behavior, but those people are really expensive, so instead we looked it up on the internet, which is free, and probably just as good. So let's start by looking beyond just the headlines presented to us in this TikTok. Forgive me if I'm a wee bit skeptical of the evidence here being a one-line summary from the Google results of 
of a mental floss article. The theory here really hinges on three main details. One, that hyenas don't eat lions. Two, that lions eat lions. And three, that this is indeed a lion skull. So first, do hyenas eat lions? Well, despite the fact that Classy King's text says that hyenas don't usually eat lions, the article he's showing in the background doesn't say that at all. In fact, that whole article says nothing about whether or not a hyena will eat a lion. Instead, what he's highlighted in his TikTok is talking about hyenas eating lion leftovers, i.e. whether hyenas follow lions around to eat the remnants of their meals, which, fun fact, they do, but it's not as common as media would lead you to believe. Yes, hyenas are scavengers, but they also get the vast majority of their food by hunting for themselves, and that is why you don't believe Disney movies or TikTokers. But okay, still doesn't address the question, would hyenas eat a dead lion? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, they absolutely would. To them, meat is meat is meat. Based on all of my research, spotted hyenas, which is the species that we see in The Lion King, they're not picky eaters. They're willing and eager to eat everything from zebras to birds to reptiles to bugs. Heck, they're even capable of eating rotten meat without getting sick. Hyenas are pretty much garbage disposals with legs. As such, a fresh lion carcass would be the equivalent of a steak dinner for them. So already it's highly likely that if presented with the opportunity, the hyenas would absolutely have eaten Mufasa. But here's the twist. If they had, you wouldn't know it. You see, hyenas practice osteophagy. They eat bones. Animals do this to supplement their diet with calcium and phosphorus that their bodies might be lacking. And for hyenas, they leave no part of their meal wasted, with strong biting jaws and highly acidic stomachs that are able to break down bone efficiently. A pack of hyenas can entirely devour a 400-pound zebra, 180 kilograms, in less than 25 minutes, leaving behind nothing. Well, nothing but red stains on the ground. So while yes, they would have eaten Mufasa gladly, the fact that his bones might still be around imply that maybe they didn't. Which brings us to question number two, would a lion eat another lion? In the TikTok, we see Classy King's Google search for what animals eat lions. What's hidden behind those search result dropdowns, though, are the actual results. And I'm here to show them to ya. The top search result comes from whateats.com, where we see the following quote right there in the evidence box. Quote, lions have almost no predators. However, old sick lions are sometimes attacked, killed, and eaten by hyenas. Which flies directly in the face of the earlier observation in the TikTok about hyenas. Man! And people try to accuse me of skewing the facts in order to fit my theories. TikTok, you shameless! Anyway, while the evidence of a Mufasa hyena feast keeps stacking up, digging deeper into the facts, you see that no, lions in fact do not tend to eat other lions, except in the most extreme of circumstances. In fact, this question was asked of Derek and Beverly Joubert, wildlife documentarian studying lions on the podcast Fresh Air. But if a lion kills a lion, will the lion eat? No, the lion will not eat um, another lion. And in fact, often the lions won't even eat other predators. So if they kill a hyena, they won't eat it either, unless they are in absolute uh, desperate times, you know, maybe at death's door. Uh, lions really don't um, have to eat other predators. But I mean, if they're dead already, they still won't eat them. No, they don't. And you know you can trust them. They have British accents. The reason why is that it just doesn't yield a reward versus effort food ratio that makes it worth hunting one another. Lions are violent creatures that are hard to kill. Why put yourself at risk trying to eat one when you could just try and chase down another helpless zebra? As far as I could tell, cannibalism in lions is very, very rare. Only happening in cases of desperate hunger and almost never with an adult male consuming another adult male. More often, it's sometimes with lions killing and eating the cubs of a rival, which again, doesn't really help us in the case of Mufasa's missing body. The most famous case of lion cannibalism actually came with the Mapago brothers, a group of six male lions who, over the course of 16 years, just roamed around a massive South African national park declaring their dominance by killing off entire prides. They were like the biker gang of apex predators. If this was The Walking Dead, they'd be like the saviors gang. The six members of the Mapago brothers even had names. There was the leader Makulu, Rasta, Pretty Boy, Kinky Tail, Mr. T, who pitied the fool, and wouldn't you know it, but none other than Scar. But despite our theory today, it was Mr. T who was the cannibal of the bunch. 
eating young cubs from rival prides, but again, a super rare instance and not an adult male eating another adult male. Also, just to throw this in here as a side note, a later scene in the TikTok theory shows the quote that Kinky Tail, one of the Mapago Six, was eventually killed and eaten by a rival tribe of lions. I looked into that blog post, the writer, and the death of Kinky Tail, which is part of a larger documentary on that exact lion pack, and there's actually no evidence of the lion being eaten. Even the author of the blog walks back his language in a comment on the post itself, so I'd take that one with a hefty grain of salt. But who knows? Maybe Scar, the movie lion and not the South African lion bully, just really is that vindictive that he wants to dunk on his dead royal brother by dunking his brother's body in stomach acid. Which leaves us with our third and final question, is that even a lion skull in the scene? No, zero for three on this one, TikTok theory. You see, lion classification is pretty simple in the fact that there's only one species of lion out there, the Panthera Leo. And from there, there have historically only been two subspecies, African lions and Asian lions, which was recently reorganized a bit, but still fairly simple breakdown. And because of that, the skulls of lions all tend to look the same. Relatively short muzzle, large nasal cavities, big orbital holes for the eyes. I'll admit, the skull in the movie does, at first glance, look similar to the Google image results for lion skull. But we're also talking about a second or two of footage from a TikTok. Anything could look similar in that amount of time. Look closer and you see that the muzzle of the skull in the movie is a lot longer than Mufasa's muzzle. But that's splitting hairs. Or splitting lion noses, I guess. The real kicker here is the teeth. Lions have three types of teeth. Incisors, small teeth at the front of the mouth for ripping and tearing. Big canine teeth, those long sharp teeth that are used as weapons to capture and kill prey. And a third type of tooth called the carnassial. Large modified molar teeth found in the back of the mouth which work like scissors to cut the large chunks of meat into smaller bits. It's actually a lesson that I taught Oliver the other day. Carnivores tend to have sharp teeth because they need to rip and tear meat. Herbivores have flat teeth for grinding plants. And what do we see in the skull that Scar is holding? Sure, there's one big canine in there, but everything else is a lot of small, flat teeth with two oversized incisors at the front of the mouth. Notice that there's no secondary fangs, no prominent bottom jaw, and most notably of all, none of those weirdly shaped carnassial teeth in the back for chopping meat. Now compare that skull with the skull of a primate, like, say, a baboon. Notice the oversized front incisors, the smaller flat molars towards the back of the mouth, the overall longer muzzle that gives the entire skull a more elongated shape. I don't know about you, but that seems like a much closer match to what we're seeing biologically. In short, our TikTok theory stood upon three major points, and not a single one of them panned out. Not one. Hyenas will eat dead lions. Lions will attack and chew, but tend not to eat other adult lions, even when in territorial disputes. And the skull we're seeing probably isn't even a lion skull. Any way you slice it, this theory is done. Plus, even if we ignore all of that and assume Scar did try to eat Mufasa, he wouldn't have been able to do it all at once. Even the largest male lions will typically only eat about 16 pounds, 7.25 kilos of food in a day. In reality, lion packs will sometimes stay close to a kill for a decent amount of time to fend off scavengers until they've completely finished it. In other words, Scar couldn't have sat down and gobbled up his big bro on the DL before jetting off to Pride Rock to make himself the new king. He'd have to have done it over the course of several days. But our last bit of evidence against this theory comes not from science, but from the story. Here's the thing. The reason we can even do something like this for a 20 plus year old Disney cartoon about talking lions and not for a lot of other talking animal movies. What do you want? I want you to go out and kill. Kill! Kill! Wow, uh, Airbud was a lot darker than I remember. Is that Lion King actually has a philosophical core to what happens in the movie? Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. That is barely 20 seconds of dialogue from the great James Earl Jones, and it is some heavy stuff for a kid's movie. But Mufasa isn't just hanging a lampshade on the whole, yeah, we totally ate like half those guys in the front row from that christening after the Elton John song, but he's also setting up the transcendental naturalism of this movie's story. The philosophy that we have to accept death as a part of life because it's a part of the overall natural life cycle. He's describing nature as a cyclical food chain, positioning 
positioning the proper death for apex predators like himself and Simba as becoming the grass, which, just so we're on the same page here, actually means that they become fertilizer for the grass after their bodies are eaten by vultures, insects, worms, and, well, anything else that wants a crack at them. Or, you know, his dead carcass just rots away in the hot sun of the African Serengeti. Think about that for your childhood hero. In other words, Mufasa's view of how the circle of life is supposed to work wouldn't just be that his dying is natural, but that his being eaten after dying is natural too. Maybe not by his jerk brother, ideally, but by something. However, the whole second and third act plot of The Lion King hinges strongly on the implication that his murder is such a fundamental violation to the proper order of the Pride Lands that it actually puts nature and the world itself out of balance. Symbolically, that balance begins to be restored not when Simba defeats Scar, but when Scar himself gets eaten. Go back and watch the ending again. Rain, the number one thing you need not only to put out the dramatic final battle fire, but also to restore life after a drought, doesn't technically return when Simba wins, it only comes after Scar himself gets eaten by the hyenas. Oh wait, there's a lion getting eaten by a hyena. Forgot to put that moment in your TikTok theory, huh? Now again, this is magical realism in action, so it's not exactly proof of anything, but if we were to extrapolate a specific mechanic to all of this, we could infer that not only did Scar not eat Mufasa, but maybe nobody did. That being murdered far away from where his body could be a part of that symbolic natural cycle of life literally broke the chain in the circle of life itself, and it isn't fully restored until Scar takes his place, literally and figuratively in the stomachs of his own hyena foot soldiers. Or maybe we're just overthinking it. The point is this, any which way to Sunday, we're gonna call this theory debunked. There's just no real proof here in the movie's text, the weird meta text, or the actual science to support the idea that Scar ate Mufasa. And all we had to do to prove it was one, remind you to double check everything you see on TikTok, and two, that everyone else in this beloved family classic movie is eventually gonna gruesomely devour each other in one way or another. Happy ending, but hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.